Hey, 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 hey. Good morning. Good morning, Alfie. Was good, Greg. Yes. How yeah, exciting. And so, so good to have you here. What a privilege it's been yeah. for me, particularly for me, that I'm sitting in South Africa, in Johannesburg, and you are there in the UK, in London, and we can still have this moment to at least converse over our breakfast. So, yeah, welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for having me virtually. This is lovely. Yeah. This is an absolute pleasure. So, yeah, Greg, bless you. And hello. Yeah, thank you. And hello, you got me? to Rachel. <laughs> Hi, Rachel, how are you? <laughs> thank you for being with us this morning to interpret while we're having this conversation. So what are you having for breakfast this morning, Alfie? Let's start there. What am I having for breakfast? I, I'm afraid it's nothing too exciting. I'm probably <laughs> just gonna have some Weetabix and some, some milk, which is dull. I mean, if it were up to me, I'd have like, well, it is up to me, but I'm lazy. I would normally have like a fry up. Um, so I'd do like fried eggs and hash browns and black pudding and bacon and beans and mushroom but i say i would normally have that's not true if someone else will make it for me i'll have that but if i have to make it it's too many different pieces and in the morning i move too slowly so i'm just like i'll just get some cereal that i could just pour out the pack put some milk on it i'm on my way so that is all i've got to look forward to so i'm glad I, i'm glad i get to talk to you greg because that that makes my morning a little bit more exciting how about you what's your what's your breakfast routine what have you had what are you having what's um usually i have a, a late breakfast so when they told me that okay it's it will be nine o'clock on your time but it will be 11 o'clock my time so i was very happy because that's the time i'm having my breakfast <laughs> so i'm a late starter i'm having coffee and i made myself a egg cheese roll so that is the first for me to have like a, oh, like a really healthy kind of like juicy breakfast with coffee in the morning. Usually I'm also in a hurry. I'm just doing something quickly and then I'm, I'm running, I'm out going to the studio. So it's great to have this time to say, okay, I can relax and take time in making breakfast. How good. I mean, you've just completely shamed me man that is there's no need for that i'm telling you i'm going to pour some cereal into a bowl you're like i'm having a healthy breakfast i'm using the time to do something different i'm like cool cool <laughs> maybe you've inspired me maybe i've got to do better that's gonna be my, hopefully that's, that's gonna be hopefully. my <laughs> yeah but now tell me alfie i mean this we, we live in such you know unprecedented times it's it's mm. such an amazing time that we're living in as much as so much has been taken away from us, our jobs, our creativity, life, people that we are close to, we love, you know, we have been taken away by this moment. But I feel also there's, there's a lot that we're gaining. Um, you know, we're gaining more friendships, we're getting closer together as people, we're becoming more and more aware of our society and the needs of society. What is your position at this, moment, at this present moment? I think I'm in a in a regaining phase. I think you've you've kind of summed it up beautifully. Um, it is those two things in very unusually um, extreme sort of high definition. You know, it, it's it's it feels like a very polarized time. Not just not just between sometimes sadly the kind of gaps between people and how people see the world, and sometimes it feels those those gaps that polarization is getting worse those gaps are getting bigger but um but also on, on a kind of personal level in terms of personal experience I have times where I'm thinking now I have time and I have space you know when the lockdown first happened in the UK I was like I can do reading I can do this I've been running around I can be in one place I can you know I can recharge and I had that experience and then I went the other way <laughs> and I sort of looked at everything that was happening in the world and I thought ah, oh, you know I can't what is this? How do you compute this stuff? How do you work through that? How do you process? And so this kind of year since since everything's been kind of ground to a halt by the pandemic has been for me that kind of drastic oscillation between these two extremes. And happily, I'm now I feel like I'm in a kind of recharging, rejuvenating place. 
um, just because I've had a really busy couple of weeks. Um, and now I'm, I'm back home. And when I say home, I say like the place that I most mean it. I'm in my parents' house. Um, and I've come here to lock down with my parents because my dad just turned 96. So that's oh, amazing. Bless his soul. Happy birthday to daddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, yeah. been lovely. it's been lovely. I mean, how about you? Have you managed to, have you managed to balance those things? Because I feel like I haven't necessarily done that too well, but I'm, I, I, I'm not trying to give myself grief over that. I think I'm trying to accept that that's been part of my way through this. But, but do you feel like you've kept an equilibrium in that? Or has it been quite drastic in terms of going between those extremes has that been your experience how have you how have you kind of navigated it sure i mean the the first three months have been tough for me because you wake up and every single day has been you receive an email that's cancelling at all or renegotiating you know um work and that has been a tough thing to deal with because as you know as creatives we depend on us being involved in projects, we depend on us traveling and being able to make work and connect physically with people. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really been a tough thing for me to like deal with. But I also realized that, okay, um, sitting here and moaning continuously won't really help in terms of ensuring my wellness is also taken care of. So I started also connecting myself with other people in the industry, talking to other artists, having these kinds of conversations where we can talk about our position mm. in looking at how are we going to survive this pandemic post, you know, everything. Once, once we know that there's a vaccine and we can move on, how are we going to do that? How are we going to pick up the pieces? And I think you know those conversations are kind of like healthier in the sense because they make us realize that we are still vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Even in, in this time when we say we've been given time to be ourselves, to stay back and to moan the moment, but we're also going to be even more vulnerable post COVID-19 because there's so much recovery that needs to happen. You know, on 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 many levels. So yeah, I'm I'm in that space at the moment where I feel also in South Africa where I am at the moment, I feel incredibly privileged that I was also given an opportunity two weeks ago to open a season of a festival in Cape Town, um, which allowed me to be on stage in front of the public for the first time in like eight months. So that was really a privilege and felt like, oh my goodness, I'm in front of people and I'm performing and I'm on stage. So that was for me, whew, what a blessing to be alive in this time and to have these kind of privileges to be able to be on stage. So yeah, man, it's a, it's, it's a tough time. I mean, I know there's a lot of people who are suffering, um, artists who, and, and companies closing down and, and just, you know, the, We've been hit hard. Yeah. Said that we've been hit hard. Yeah. You're completely yeah. right. I'm so I'm so delighted you had that experience. You got to be on stage again. I was I was thinking about that as you were talking, as you're talking about work being cancelled and things, especially because I know we've talked about it in the past, and you say how far ahead things get scheduled and how and I've always been like or of how many projects you have to have in your head at one time, even if it's just knowing it's gonna happen. You know, I, yeah. and that, I find that amazing because I'm much more of a kind of like plodding individual and I guess my career doesn't, doesn't, um, doesn't challenge that so much in the sense that usually a project comes in, I do it, and then towards the end of it, you think about the next one. Things I don't tend to have, or I haven't tended to have such a big lead time. And I struggle even when I'm doing something to think, oh, I've got an audition for something else somewhere. I want it to go away. I want to be just here, <laughs> you know. I, I really struggle to like juggle those things in any kind of way. Um, but it's a mourning process, isn't it? It's difficult when you 
that, that, that kind of maybe you have to go through when, when, you, when you lose work and you've invested in it in some kind of way, you know, you give yourself to that, even if maybe you haven't started working on it, but you've just started, well, the work starts the minute you engage with it in any kind of mental Absolutely. way, doesn't it? You, you start yeah. giving yourself. So that is really hard. But how great to get to follow something through and have that moment of connection. Because that, for me, that's the thing I've missed. Um, I've missed the connection. It's beautiful yeah. to have this because this, yeah. this is that. But what I would give yeah. to have you here or to be there with yeah. you. Yeah. No, that's very true. So I mean, to share a space. Absolutely. A when, when I was asked, you know, who do you want to, to be in a conversation with? And, and I had to think deeply because you know, there were so many people that I still want to have conversations with. But I felt very strongly that there was something that it was kind of like inconclusive because you were in, in tree with um, in it is Elba and Kwame Amar, you know, production. Mm -hmm. And and we worked quite closely, but we we had very little time in terms of us having this kind of conversations mm -hmm. outside work, you know, the conversations were always centered around the work, around mm -hmm. the production. So I was very curious in terms of, how I'm curious about that person in terms of, you know, how, when they wake up, what do they do? What do they eat? <laughs> they kind, of, kind of like, you know, they sound silly in terms of questions, but that's how you define define a human being and you see humanity in a person through the things they do. And it's often the small things. Um, are you involved in any other things now apart from the work that you do so great as an actor? Uh, but are you involved in, in other, you know, like let's say charities, things like that, that are yeah. um, asking of your humanity to really come true? Yeah, I am. And that's, and, 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 that's lovely that you've said that, Greg. Thank you. I'm getting all bad. <laughs> but, um, but, um, but that's something that, that has, I guess, started to, I wouldn't say shift, because it's, it's trying to have a social conscious, but trying to develop my social consciousness and, and, and make it something that impels me to action is something that I've been, it's been a journey that I've been on for, for a while now, but that's, you're always trying to take more steps in that direction. So I'm, I'm the patron of a couple of charities. One, that's a, that's a new thing, which is a refugee. It's called the London Church's Refugee Fund. Um, and they um, raise money to give out grants to, to like frontline organizations that work with refugees. So they can have, in London specifically, so that they can have money to buy a phone card to call home or, or, or um, one-off cash grants that they enable the organizations that actually work directly with refugees to give. So that's obviously, you know, because, you can get support in all sorts of ways, but sometimes you need to be able to pay your rent or whatever it is. Um, the yeah. kind of uncertainty of, 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 of the world at the minute, I think one of the really hard things is, is the people who are most, most vulnerable, the people who, who are most failed by our yeah. society um, are being impacted, you know, tenfold compared to me <laughs> so um so it's been lovely to be able to get involved with that another charity that i'm involved with is called the shakespeare quorum shakespeare schools foundation um and it, this is a beautiful thing that i discovered how many years ago but they basically go into schools and and equip the teachers and encourage the teachers to put on a a Shakespeare play which they then arrange to be put on in a professional venue basically gives children a relationship with being on stage with Shakespeare which I think people think of as being so difficult and so challenging and so I think a lot of people think that's not for me and so they get this experience where they get to make his words their words and they get to see that yeah. this actually can speak experience. and there's a sense of achievement because it's kind of regarded as the sort of pinnacle of English literature and these kids um, put on these plays and discover that it can be fun and it, it, it just it just does so much for them it, I think it's a it's a beautiful idea because it it shows how charity it shows how um, the arts 
can really kind of embolden a child and create possibility and open you up and, and so that's a wonderful thing to be involved with so i've so i've been being involved with that and just little bits of kind of personal you know i went and, and joined the black lives matter uh, lockdown and i thought really hard about that so just just trying to do things to to effect change in the world where i see the where i feel personally that it the change needs to be brought but but how about you greg i mean i think yeah. i think <laughs> you must have a million and one things going on i mean just from what uh, i know gosh you know but yeah it's also exciting things you know, it's things that um I knew that uh, I was supposed to do, but I've just never had the time to do them. So we got together with some of the artists in South Africa and we created an organization, a foundation, we're calling it um, STAND, which, which stands for Sustaining Theatre and Dance. So we, we've come together as players in the industry and we're like, look, you know, there's no point of, uh, of, of us continuously pointing fingers at government. Why don't we, do it ourselves. Why don't we create a foundation of which we can recruit patrons and we are the first patrons. So artists putting in money into that and we're asking more people to become part of the project as patrons and we create projects out of that, you know, which are allowing artists to be re-energized again to find creative ways in which they can create. So we're partnering with spaces, different spaces, theaters, museums that are on board with us. And we trying to find opportunities for artists to be able to work and earn an income in this time when they are not able to um, in a way that they are used to. So really, I mean, the, I'm, I'm chairing the committee at the moment and, and I mean, it's, it's a lot of work that goes you know, behind the scenes. But once you see the projects unfolding- I can imagine. Yeah, once you see the projects unfolding, it's fantastic, it's amazing. And you see opportunities that have been given to artists who might not have had those opportunities for them to dream, for them to be able to put up work. Um, next week, we're launching a, a mentorship project that has been going on between choreographers and, 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 and dancers. Um, and they were, they've been making films, dance films, and those are getting, they, they launching next week. So to have that kind of an opportunity where you even creating a platform for choreographers to be able to think outside the box, like, okay, what is the new norm? How do we, you know, um, allow ourselves to still function, to still put up work there, even though we know that it's not easy now to be on stage, to congregate in a theater, but how can we still package these works so that they can reach you know, our audiences in a different form, in a different format? So those are the kind of things that are exciting me in a way. Um, I've kept the company going, still the 23 staff of Vuyani Dance Theatre, um, still under full contract. I don't know how we're doing it. Wow. Uh, but you know, <laughs> we're still working. We're still making work. Our young dancers are also creating work. So that's that's fantastic. We we are in a creatively healthier environment than we were uh, certainly in the last six months. I think we have advanced ourselves to like let's take control of the situation and let's not wait for somebody else to tell us how we should do it or how it should be done. So that's that's been a fantastic journey to to be in in this very very moment. Um, where are you I'm, in terms of your work? <laughs> oh, in terms of work. Um, in terms of work, or are you I, just or are you just watching yourself on the screen? No, nah, don't say that. Like, like this it's is what happening. I used to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want people. I don't want people to know that's what I do. Sit there at home, flicking through, flicking through old jobs. No, 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 no. That's, <laughs> that's, that's not what I. It's it's too painful an experience. I wouldn't do that. Um, so I've just finished, kind of like like you actually. And it's funny you saying that you just got the chance to be on stage again after all this time. Made me think how lovely that we have 
a kind of shared experience. It's lovely when you watch, when you pay attention, when you connect, you see how you vibe with people. Do you know what I mean? You see how sometimes, oh, I had that experience. You know, it, it, it maybe seems like a little thing, but I was on stage about two weeks ago. Um, mm. And again, it was just incredible because one of the things I found so difficult about this time is is adjusting how we connect with people you know and i and i'm and, and this is a beautiful miraculous thing that you could be in joba i could be in london and we can have this conversation in this way and i can see you and we can talk we can connect um but the thing i love most of all as i said before is is, is being with people being in a physical space for people um and so to get to do that in work um at this time has been amazing. So I did a play called Crave by, uh, by, uh, by a playwright called Sarah Kane. Um, and we had a really short run. We only ran for a week and a bit. Um, but the theatre, this was down at Chichester Festival Theatre, they did an incredible job to, to, to make it work at all in, in the conditions and, you know, they socially distanced the audience and, and all the rest of it. It is a beautiful, beautiful piece. And we had this very, what was for me, a very profound experience. The lockdown here was announced on the Saturday. That was our last preview. Oh my uh, God. Just before the last preview was announced. So we thought, are we going to have a show? And they said, it's going to come in effect on Wednesday. So we opened the show on Monday, played Tuesday. Wednesday night, we knew that was going to be our last night with an audience. And they were live streaming the play. So we would still do the shows on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, but we wouldn't have anyone. So Wednesday night was the last time we could play it to people directly. And the last time that people could be together in a theater for like six weeks or something. So the energy in the space was, I thought, what a gift to be able to be on stage tonight. What an amazing, and the atmosphere in that space was like, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget it. It was so beautiful, and it was it was it was the power of that connection that you get when you're in a when you're in a space with your audience. Um, yeah. But also, it was the knowledge, like you said mm -hmm. earlier. We're becoming aware. We're becoming aware of things that we maybe taken for granted. We're becoming aware how precious these things are. Mm -hmm. um, again, becoming aware of things in the world that don't work and that we need to change. Mm -hmm. And there was an aware of how special it was to be together in the space and how precious a thing that was. Yeah. Um, and it's just made for the most amazing <laughs> night. So I'm still beautiful. Yeah. Really, really. It's, it's amazing. It really is amazing. I mean, um, at the moment I'm working with Sue uh, Bexer, who is a... Um, with who, director. sorry, I didn't hear. Sue Bergmaster, uh, she's a she's a she's a director for theatre rights. Right. Okay. Yeah, wow. um, um, I'm collaborating with her on 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 a piece that we call you know Global Playground, oh. and and it's commissioned by Manchester International Festival, and we're still hoping that we will right. be able to do this in front of the public. But we're already thinking in terms of, you know, if we don't get into the public, then what does that really mean, you know? Um, so it's a, it's a situation that we somehow kind of like appreciate the fact that we can still have an opportunity to still be commissioned and make work and producers come on board with an understanding that, well, you know, if it does not make it to be in, in the public physically, how can we also look at it and show, ensuring that we still somehow make the work and package it differently you know um so that's that's wonderful to know that uh, there's flexibility mm. in the, in, i mean the first preference is still to have the public in you know in the space but you know you just never know you have to plan for 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 different ways in which the work can live and survive and can reach people differently right. yeah how how have you found that, Greg? Because you sound, just hearing you there, you, you sound really positive about it. And, and, and you're completely right. You've like contextualized it perfectly. You put it into perspective because you say, how do we make the work live? How do we still meet people with it? You know, how do we still bring people? Um, and that's the game, isn't it? It might not be the way you'd hoped or it was this, yeah. but how 
still live. Um, have you found that all right? Uh, have, um, have I'm, becoming, I'm becoming more and more friends with the camera. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I used to do this to the camera, no, nah, wait, no, 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 no. You know? Now I'm like, come, 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 be my friend, you know? <laughs> let's <laughs> let's you work so together, let's be friends. Um, you know, because, you know, and I see it as the, as the second director to me, the camera has become like my, my peer now, you know, and even now when I'm creating, I have the camera in the space and, and I look back into the material and I'm like, oh, okay, actually, maybe it's better that way. And it's something that I've never used before. It's a device that I've never kind of warmed up to, but now I'm getting more and more closer to, you know, to, to the camera as a friend. Wow. Um, and because you not, know, it's just what the situation requires. Mm -hmm. um, and we know it won't be, it won't be business as usual. You know, it won't, we won't be able to do the things similar way. So it's part of evolving, I think, you know, we need mm -hmm. to evolve with the time and technology is there to make things easier. Even though I know that it takes away a lot of things that connects us physically as human beings. Uh, but again, it makes some other things a um, little bit easier in a sense. So we can still achieve some something out of it. Um, I'm curious about your, when you were in Hollywood, uh, because that's another world, that's another field in its own, with its own complications and politics. Uh -huh. Um, I mean, working there compared to making films or, or being on stage productions in the UK or anywhere else, what, what is the difference? Um, goodness, what is the difference? It's... Yeah, and you can talk being, you know, next to, um, you know, the biggest stars of Hollywood. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. Being yourself I mean, being I... a star. <laughs> Um, you know what? That is kind of that's that's it, it has an unreality to it. That place, I think, that that I think people react to very differently. I think some people love it, and there is a mystique about it. But sometimes, I don't know. I think some part of myself felt that I was missing something when I was in LA. Maybe that's a reflection of the way Hollywood infuses the energy of the town. But mm, yeah. there were, and, and, and the truth is LA has many, many, many sides to it. And it is, it is a, it's nothing if not a fascinating place. Um, and so I think in a way I try to compensate for that unreality by, by, by maybe bringing little bits of what was normal to me back home. Um, and, and coincidentally that like led me to discovering another side of the city that, that I really, kind of found exciting and stimulating in another way so so you know I like playing football I play football with my friends here and I found a football team out there and I started playing with them and, and 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 I ended up like going sort of however many times a week a week or a month or whatever to go and play eight aside football in East LA with yeah. a whole lot of um Mexican and Guatemalan and El Salvadorian immigrants and and like first and second generation and like people are more speaking Spanish than English and it's just a completely different LA it's you know you're not in the high rises in in, in you know West Hollywood or something and I, yeah. and I just found that I just, I just I mean I like playing football so on a basic level it was that but it was fascinating to me to see another side to that place, mm -hmm. um, another LA that was really cool. I mean, Hollywood is, a, is as I say, is, is, is a kind of compelling, but you get to work with extraordinary people. Um, it's a massive business and the business, yeah. the kind of sort of mecca of, of the business of the film business, right? And so it has all this, energy and this charge and, and it's an issue that um that functioned very differently to how i was used to working because really before i went to america to work i was doing my plays in london so so i had to adjust yeah. my own processes it, 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 it was a challenge but but i mean you put it beautifully you need to adapt you yeah know, you, uh, mm. 
you need to find a way of of of, of moving with the times, and that sure. gives stuff. Do you know what I mean? Artistically, it might in the short term be something pragmatic, but it mm. but it gives things to your work and the way you approach your work. It gives you tools, um, and hopefully that's what this time is doing. Yeah. So right. to, talking about like, like you said, talking about what talking about adapting. Um, what are you up to for the rest of the day? <laughs> oh, what I'm up to for the rest of the day? Adapting, adapting to these strange times. That's what I'm doing. Work out how to. Um, what am I doing? Uh, it's it's uh, as I say, I'm kind of in a like rejuvenating space. I've been sort of busy, so I'm just going to be at home. I'm going to try and I'm going to try and read to my dad a bit. Because he's oh, that's 96. Okay. That's, that's, my big, that's my big hope. I want to just sit down. I have a few things to sort out. I'm going to make some time and sit down and, and read to him. And maybe yeah. read with him. That's, my, that's, that's what I want from my day. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it today. Because I've been saying it for a few days. And I've just had stuff to sort out. So it's quiet. But, um, but I think it will be nourishing. And it will bring me joy. Yeah. How about you, Craig? What's happening? What, well, is, what I mean, does today look like? Yeah, my, my day is basically very much open, which <laughs> I don't get it so often. <laughs> but I'm going to go past the studio because I've got younger choreographers working. They're filming the material on over the weekend and I won't be there when they film, I'll be in Cape Town. Right. So um, yeah, I'm going in just to have a look in terms of what they're up to, what they're doing and be inspired by the work. It's amazing how young people, um, when they are kind of lost and they're trying to find themselves, how inspiring that process is. Mm. Um, you know, because it comes really from an innocent place and it's not about pleasing the other person, it's about pleasing themselves. And so there's so much honesty that comes with that, which really makes me to be in a position where I feel like, oh, I'm learning again, you know, just through the process of watching them. So yeah, Alfie, we could go on and uh, on. On and, and on, on and on. And that is beautiful. <laughs> what a beautiful thing to be doing with the rest of the day and what a, yeah, what a way of looking at it. That's what yeah. we all have. We have to keep working with that integrity to try and find out who we are, what we're doing, what we're about. And, and <laughs> what a great thing to connect to and what a great, that's Oh, great. Yeah, man. I want to I wanna go on. I want to move on. I want to just like, you know, continue to have this conversation with you. But hey, Likewise. we're not in control of time. No, <laughs> we, we, we're in control of what we can do with the time. <laughs> so okay. we've come to the end. So thank you so much, Alfie. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for, you know, responding to the invitation. I really, really Thank love you, this Greg. moment. And I will always cherish it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rachel Jones, for your work, for interpreting, for connecting us with the entire um, community. So thank you very much. Thank you to Dance Umbrella for your, for your amazing work that you continue to do for your support in the dance. Um, amazing, 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 amazing. Uh, particularly to Emma Glestin, and I hope this is a great farewell for you as you are passing on, you know, the baton to someone else. So thank you so much for your amazing love and work in the dance. So in that note, thank you, Alfie. Have an amazing, amazing day with Dad. <laughs> thank you, and you. Big love. Cheers, man. <laughs>